to start the webinar now. Hi everyone, hello, and uh, thanks for taking out time on a weekday to join this webinar. My name is Vivek Pranelwal, and I'm the founder at Aizuto. And today we'll talk about how can you drive serious sales using browser notifications. For those of you who had attended the last webinar, we had spoken about uh, how browser notifications can be used to fight the law of shitty click throughs. Right? Again, having said that, uh, as an e-commerce marketer, click throughs uh, still remain a vanity metric for most of us. Right? The real objective is to, is to get to conversions and drive the conversion rate up. Right? And that is exactly what we'll focus on in today's webinar. Now, given the fact that uh, we get ISO to work with almost uh, 10,000 plus e-commerce marketers across the globe, Right. Uh, we also engage with with marketers on multiple platforms. Right. One of the platforms where I actively participate in conversations is the Shopify forums. Right. Now, this is something that I saw yesterday on the Shopify forum. Right. A classic problem that a lot of uh, marketers and merchants who are starting their e-commerce journey face. Right. Huge amount of traffic acquired through a particular channel or a combination of channels, but that does not convert to sales. Right? Now, this is a classic problem that a lot of marketers face in their early days. Right? The problem with, with this level, now the problem is not really with the marketer, honestly, in this case. Right? The marketer is just trying to you know, get to his end mean, which is more sales. Right? But the problem with this presentation of the problem, right? the problem is the, the way it has been presented. 5,000 visits and only six sales, right? Now, this does not really give you any perspective. What this, uh, the underlying point being that aggregated data, right? When you present data in this format, which is 5,000 page views across three channels, AdWords, Facebook, Instagram, but are not getting me enough sales, right? That fundamentally is a bit vague for someone to actually chop down a plan to help you out, right? These data, aggregate data that generally creates strong false positives or false negatives, right? And leads to certain strong assumptions while you're trying to solve a problem statement, right? In fact, one of the most, uh, you know, uh, most famous bloggers out there who focuses, uh, who talks about analytics and marketing is Avinash Kaushik, and uh, he calls it out, right? He, he simply says, Aggregate data is bullshit. And I completely agree with him, right? Because aggregate data never ever gives you a real picture of what's really happening deep down in your conversion funnel. Right? Now, Avinash, uh, in fact, uh, if you haven't subscribed to his blog, you should, you should definitely consider, you know, heading to Occam Razor, right? Occam Razor is an amazing blog which, which focuses on analytics and marketing technologies. Right? Now, Given this as a context, right? You know, what we sort of try to do is we sort of try to use you know, precisely the Occam's approach to break down a problem, right? And pick up a solution which has the least number of assumptions in it, right? Uh, you should try to do a Wikipedia search on the word Occam, Occam Rera, right? And uh, and look at uh, look at the look at the proposed methodology of how is it that a problem should be solved, right? Now. Uh, from a classic e-commerce marketer's point of view, uh, we all aim to get more conversions, right? Having said that, before we actually start solving and optimizing for conversions, we need to understand the real problem around conversions. Right. Now, what we'll cover today specifically in this webinar, right, are essentially four key things. Number one, how is it that we can understand the funnel better, right? But, but before we do that, right, the question really is why is it that you need to understand your funnel better, right? How is it that you can actually set up your funnel, right? Number three, how is it that you can identify the right pain point in your conversion funnel, right? And number four, how is it that you can, you can attack that right pain point with the right set of tools, right? Now, one of the classic uh, examples, right, when it comes to understanding the why behind a funnel, right, is, is, is that of northern bomb sites, right? Now, if you go back to the first uh, slide which I've shown you, right, which, which said 5,000 visits but only six sales, right? 
this is exactly what also happened in the world war in the second world war right when the when the when the us forces were bombing the uh, almost half of europe which was occupied by germany right were using this technology made by norden which allowed which claimed that it could pinpoint the the bomb drop location to 20 meters right of the target now this was an absolutely amazing revelation for the armies right uh, everyone in the us armed forces uh, air force army and uh, and navy adopted the technology but after 3 years of continuous bombing across france germany belgium right it was a complete failure right the german bases were still in place right now the challenge really which came out was that right that uh, not an oversight not an essentially made a big assumption while he was making his formula which calculated the drop location and the drop time right that formula did not take into consideration the height appropriate height that formula did not take into consideration the wind moment right and there was certain and there were certain strong assumptions made because of which it was an absolute failure right? now this is exactly what happens when we start attacking a specific channel of acquisition right without really understanding the channel of acquisition when it comes to solving for our conversions right so conversion funnel unsigned conversion funnel is really the most important part and in fact the first step that we as marketers need to take now this here is how a typical buyer journey looks like right uh, a typical buyer journey at least in today's scenario right involves one multiple touch points right number two it involves multiple multiple methods of consuming information right and it it definitely involves dot and it definitely is not leading right uh, the conventional way of advertising for a long time has been we assume that the user will will come to our store will select a product or will browse through a couple of products he will like a product he or she will like a product and then they will simply go ahead and buy the product right now that is exactly how that that is exactly how the buying chain does not happen right this 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 design sort of presents a beautiful overview right of how is it that a typical buyer behaves or interacts with your e-commerce store right a typical buyer would be searching for a specific product right they 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 open five typical tab, five tabs of businesses offering the same product right they do their their bit of research at their end right they seek for reviews from their peers they read reviews about the product on your own website as well right they seek for elements which would trigger trust they would compare for prices delivery uh, delivery process shipping rates right and then at some point in time they actually make the decision to purchase right and should the experience be beautiful they also go out there and start evangelizing about the product about your store and product right? now given the now given the complicated uh, given this complicated buyer journey right uh, we as marketers need to need to take a step back when we are evaluating our conversion funnel right now obviously a uh, lot of these a uh, lot of this research right happens would be happening outside of the store as well having said that what we need to sort of figure out is how is it how is it that we can draw a parallel right and figure out the best proxies in our conversion funnel in our environment right to identify where exactly is the user right now now uh, a typical funnel and as you know as it shows right has three parts to itself awareness concentration followed by purchase right now uh this essentially constitutes so if you look at uh, this funnel right now at a high thousand feet view right this is exactly how your funnel will look like the home page visited this really is your awareness section right this this precisely here is is where the user is touching your website for the first time this could be through multiple channels adwords your ppc campaigns your facebook campaign instagram campaign your organic search results listing your email campaign your social presence right uh, from from these multiple channels when the user first lands on your store right and discover about your store uh, browse your products 
that is that essentially is what sort of constitutes your top of the funnel which essentially is the awareness stage right now as the user sort of engages more with your store more with your website right and does specific actions which would which would be for instance browsing multiple products right uh, checking out multiple categories uh, conducting specific searches on your website mm -hmm. right using this way using specific filters of price, color, brand, category on your website, right? This, is a, this essentially is a part where they're trying to do their research and they're trying to essentially uh, drill down on that one product which they want to buy, right? This exactly, these three stages, these, three, these two stages specifically is where the user is in the so-called middle of the funnel, right? Uh, the user has sort of decided on what exactly is it that they want to buy and they add a product to the cart, right? That is precisely when they actually head to the bottom of the funnel, which is add to cart and, and transacting and buying the product. Right. Now, this is a typical e-commerce funnel, right? Which would be, uh, which sort of holds its ground for, for most of the marketers out there. Right. Now, it is important to sort of understand, right? Before we actually attack the funnel itself. So it's important to understand uh, some very, very specific metrics and, uh, and user behavior at a high level. Right? So the most important, uh, important, uh, important metric to sort of track is how, how does your conversion path look like? And what is the typical time to conversion? Right? Now, conversion path essentially stands for exactly what you saw on the previous page, on the previous slide, which is, once a user comes to your website through, let's say, uh, an organic search result, right? Then the user is engaging with you and the user, let's say, gives away their email ID to you for a coupon code, right? And the user comes back to your website, right? And then again comes back to your website and sort of, let's say, buys in the fourth visit, right? So a typical conversion path would, in this case, would be uh, landing from organic results, heading to email traffic, heading to direct traffic, heading to a purchase. Right? Now, this, again, depending upon what exactly is it that you're selling, and depending upon uh, the typical cart value of the product that you're selling, right? Uh, the conversion path and the time to conversion could, could vary from anywhere between one day to a month, right? Uh, there are folks selling furniture on the internet, the conversion part of that case could be slightly longer. Right? Folks selling uh, mobile access in the internet, the conversion part for that would be slightly shorter. Right? Uh, this varies, of course, on a store by store basis. This varies, of course, on a category by category basis. Right? Important to sort of understand because this will really help us decide the right strategy while we are talking about our communication plan. Number two, understanding the acquisition channels. Right? and understanding which channels are helping you drive highest conversions and which channels are helping you drive highest revenue. Right? Now, it is important to note this, right? Highest conversions does not necessarily apply highest revenue. Right? For instance, Google search could be driving highest number of conversions for you, right? Having said that, from a pure dollar value point of view, right? the highest revenue might be coming from a different channel. Now, both of these metrics, which I sort of mentioned right now, are something that you can track very, very comfortably through Google Analytics. Right? Uh, I personally stick to Google Analytics as the ultimate source of truth because uh, it's a tried, tested, tried, tested beast, right? Which practically captures every single detail about your e-commerce store. Right? So if you haven't sort of set it up, right, I would strongly recommend you that set that you set it up right away for your for your store. Number three, and, more, uh, and probably the least understood, right, uh, <clears throat> of these three metrics is, 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 is that of assisted conversions, right? Now, assisted conversions essentially starts coming into factor when you scale your e-commerce store from, let's say, one order per day to 100 orders per day and beyond, right? Uh, assisted conversions essentially states that uh, the idea is very simple. Uh, because the user is going through a series of step, steps towards uh, before the final transaction, right? The user discovers your product through multiple channels. The user lands on your store 
through multiple mediums, right? We must understand the value of each and every single medium uh, and attribute a particular conversion to each channel in the insane ratio. Now, there are different attribution models out there, and we sort of cover that, you know, keep that for, for, for another webinar. But at a broad level, what is important to understand is this. If a user came to you, came to your website from email, organic search, Facebook, social media, product listing, and a display ad, then and then converted as well, then the user's conversion needs to be attributed to all four channels. Right? The attribution percentage might vary across these four channels, but all these four channels at some level contribute uh, quantifiably to your conversions, right? And there are numerous case studies out there, right, wherein Brands which have shut down, let's say, for example, their display campaigns have seen a drastic result, drastic impact in their conversions because display typically is, is driven, uh, display typically is driven as a branding exercise, right? Which sort of, uh, which, which at times, uh, which, 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 when, uh, which when looked through a very strong performance filter might not give you the right picture. Display is typically a heaviest contributor in your assisted conversions, right? Now, once you sort of understand these metrics, right, this will sort of help us uh, identify the right bottlenecks at the right uh, in the conversion funnel. Now, uh, how is it that you as a marketer can actually get started, right? So, uh, the first and most important thing, right, if you are building, if you have an e-commerce store which is running on a custom uh, on a ready-made platform, let's say like a Shopify or a Magento or a Big Commerce, right? Uh, all these platforms have practically have a one or two click integration with Google Analytics, right? You could set up your Google Analytics real, real quick, right? Uh, into these platforms, we will actually be sharing uh, specific guides for integration of Google Analytics uh, over an email after the webinar as well, right? Uh, <clears throat> number two, if you are if, if you're new to Google Analytics and sort of uh, haven't really you know delved deep, right? Uh, uh, there is an amazing course on the Google Analytics Academy which talks about how can GA be used for e-commerce specifically, right? We'll share a link of that course as well with you, right? And number three would be uh, setting up specific experiments and reviews, review process while you are. Uh, when you're crafting a communication strategy, right? Uh, what we've sort of seen over a period of time uh, for the past, you know, few uh, past 20 months of working with marketers is that uh, there is a very clear, uh, while, while marketers pick up channels to try out, right? They don't really put down those experiments on paper, right? Because of which uh, the accountability and attribution was for a toss, right? And we would sort of strongly recommend you to set up a very clear experiment tracking and review process for you to figure out what is it that is working and what is that is not working, right? Uh, if we have ready template for this as well, you can sort of you know, share that as well with, your, with, uh, with all of you who have registered for the webinar as well, right? Right, now, given that you have, uh, and, and an which I'll make from my side is that all of you have a level of understanding of, of Google Analytics and have such a your e-commerce uh, store e-commerce analytics on GA already so far. Now, uh, we've typically seen three types of challenges across e-commerce store that you sort of dealt with so far, right? Uh, one of the most, uh, yeah, uh, we've, we've seen, uh, and these challenges sort of vary across the funnel, right? Uh, this could be at the bottom of the funnel, which is both, right? So. And these would typically be issues with either your cart abandonment process, your checkout process, your payment gateway issues, right? Uh, this could involve issues at a UX level, at a design level, at a process flow level, right? Or this could you know, simply mean that you're not doing enough of recovery as well, right? The solutions obviously are secondary. The key is to sort of figure out what exactly is it that is leaking in your conversion funnel, right? Uh, second problem which you've seen very clearly is uh, is people not able to understand whether the leakage is at uh, uh, so understand leakages at the middle of the funnel, right? More than often, right? Uh, while let's say the e-commerce store is converting at at a fantastic three percent conversion rate, right? Uh, people come up with statements like, "I have ten thousand visitors, right?" 
that I'm only getting 10 sales, right? Now the challenge might not, not now the solution to this problem might not really be retargeting, right? The solution, uh, the issue might also be in the middle of the funnel wherein, uh, wherein not enough people are actually able to discover products smoothly on the store, right? This could be a classic navigation issue. Uh, uh, a way to measure this would be, are you getting enough add to carts? Are you seeing enough people for adding products to cart? Right? That's the strongest proxy towards measuring how effective or how efficient is in the middle of the funnel. Right? Uh, we'll sort of also talk about how do they actually solve this as well using one right? uh, the third, the most, uh, The third, the most, uh, most common problem, typically at, at an early stage would be, Top of the funnel challenges, which is not having enough users coming to your website or coming back to your website when you have started your e-commerce store. Right? Uh, these are typically related to a specific acquisition channel, right, or uh, or your specific campaign which you're running on those channels. Right? Now, uh, it is important for you as a marketer to understand the the conversion rate across your conversion funnel, number one, and number two, the conversion velocity of a user across your conversion channel. Okay. Once you have a sense of these two numbers, you will have a very clear visibility on where exactly is it that you are struggling with in terms of, in terms of conversion and where exactly is it that you should attack, uh, attack first, right, whilst you're trying to optimize your store for conversions. Now, uh, we've seen very classically right, that uh, bottom of the funnel leakage is an industry wide problem. Right? There's almost a 68 to 75 percent, uh, sorry, okay, yeah. So we've seen that there's a classic 68 to 75 percent people who have abandoned. Uh, who abandon shopping carts and never come back, right? Now, yeah, right, so, right, so now, now given this as a broader statement, right, where people, add, people, you know, people, where, where users just add to cart and forget about it, right, uh, retargeting becomes an extremely important thing. Having said that, there is no reason why you should not ensure that your checkout process, your payment gateway, and your cart are stitched together beautifully and are performing as they should. Right? If they're not, please consider looking at some of uh, some of the benchmark stores or some of the benchmark processes of platforms like Shopify, Shopify Plus, Magento, or Big Commerce, and look at how exactly do they execute uh, the bottom of the funnel process. Now, assuming that part is sorted out, right? Let's look at what exactly can you do on and more importantly, how can browser push notifications be used to drive to drive efficiency at the bottom of the funnel, right? Now, this essentially involves two steps, right? Number one, identifying people who forgot about their cart, right? Number two, reaching out to them, identifying the right time to reach out to these to these users, right? And number three, reaching out to these users with a very, very precise communication, laser, laser targeted, laser focused, right? And, <clears throat> and bring them back to your website and bring them back to the cart. Now, bottom of the funnel campaigns or, bottom of, uh, or notification targeting users at the bottom of the funnel essentially are a function of three things, right? Now, these are, from a point of view of just, uh, from a point of view of identifying the right users, right? Uh, it is important to understand three levels, right? Because they will sort of dictate the efficiency of your retargeting campaign. Right? Number one, right? When was the cart abandoned, right? Or in simpler words, the recency of the cart. If the cart was abandoned two hours ago, six hours ago, one day ago, seven days ago, or, or one month ago, right? If you're selling, for example, cars on the internet, right? Uh, expecting someone to buy a car in a day would be very unfair, right? That is why executing a retargeting campaign for a car in a day might not really make sense. Having said that, if you're selling t-shirts, right, it would definitely make sense to execute your retargeting campaign within a couple of hours, right? There are, in fact, uh, there are 
there are uh, retargeting solutions out there, such as Ayatol and Tritio, which literally trigger retargeting campaigns in 20 minutes flat out as well. Right? So it is important to understand what is it that you're selling, right? What is it, what is the worth of the product that you're trying to sell, right? To sort of, to sort of decide the free, uh, the timing of the retargeting campaigns as well. Also, an important thing to sort of note and understand is this, right? Uh, when you, <clears throat> the efficiency of a retargeting campaign is also related to how, how soon do you actually touch base with the user, right? And try to bring them back to the cart, right? Now, from pure, uh, uh, so, and this could be, uh, and, and, and this is only a function of how efficient is your tool or, uh, or the medium which you're using in terms of communication, right? And this is exactly where, Browser notifications have a have a have a far superior performance advantage over email or display ads. Right? Email because emails have horrendous open rates, right? And banner ads because banner ads are fundamentally plagued by you as an end user being banner blind, or and uh, and the fact that you as an end user uh, would very well be using an ad blocker, which sort of completely restricts you from even looking at the ads in the first place. Now, second level, which we have seen a lot of marketers use very, very efficiently is the value of the card. Right? A lot of times, uh, customers, uh, as users, uh, adding multiple products to card, right, have a far higher intent towards, towards buying as compared to users adding only one product to card. Right? The overall card value itself will sort of, uh, will, can be used as a very strong proxy right? while deciding the priority of the retargeting campaign, right? So definitely using cart value as a filter would be a great help as well. Right? Number three would be the category of the brand of the product which they have added to cart, right? Now, if you're running a marketplace, for instance, right? So uh, let's consider an example of, uh, of a fashion apparel uh, e-commerce store, right? Marketplace store, right? Who's selling uh, products, uh, products from multiple brands in the store. Now, because certain users have affinity to certain brands, right, it is definitely important to sort of use that brand name or category name while communicating with the end user, right? This sort of can be used to make your data campaign itself or uh, the communication uh, and the notification itself far more impactful as well, right? Now, uh, all these three levels, you know, you, you can design your retargeting campaign Right, either with one of these levers, right, or all of these levers combined, right, it depends completely on the sophistication which you're looking at, right, and depends it depends also on the size of audience which you're looking at, right. It might not make sense to use all levers if you end up with only one user in your audience of retargeting, right. You might want to sort of uh, hit a number which is statistically significant to sort of give you a sense of whether this experiment was successful or not successful as well, right? Uh, moving on, right? The next step, right, from a classic retargeting point of view, and, and something which, which already happens at a display level is, is personalization of the communication itself, right? So number one, as I said, was the, so the first step in making your virtual fund more efficient was to identify the right user who has abandoned the cart segmenting that user on the basis of the cart value, the recency of the cart, and, uh, and the category of the brand which the user has actually abandoned, right? The next level could really be focusing on, on, on literally personalizing every single element of the notification, right? And ensuring that the user sees exactly what is it that they had abandoned in the first place, right? Personalization has a flat, 60 to 70 percent impact on CDRs, right? We've seen this at scale across across brands, across stores, right? Across geographies, right? This is something which is which, which is absolutely universal, right? The moment you start personalizing, the moment you start making notifications contextual, right? Users start responding to it far more beautifully, right? Uh, both of these, both of these, right, which I've mentioned so far, one is which is retargeting and second which is personalization are now possible on the eyes of the platform as well, right? Uh, <clears throat> now, this is essentially where retargeting and personalization 
sort of can be used to make your bottom of funnel more efficient, right? The typical CTRs on these campaigns can sort of vary between uh, 8% to 35%, depending again upon what is it that you're selling and how much is it, how, uh, and what word is it that you're selling. Right? Uh, now, moving on to the middle of the funnel. Right? Now, middle of the funnel typically is plagued by by classic inefficiencies such as uh, research, right? Like, for instance, if a user is considering purchasing uh, a guitar, right? Now, artists would definitely uh, a musical instrument is a very uh, is a very uh, is a pretty expensive uh, pretty expensive investment from a user's part, right? And they would definitely want to sort of research research more and more and more and more about the product, about the brand, and about your store, right? Now, this would, what this is actually translates into is a longer purchase cycle. Right? And this is exactly where middle of the funnel campaigns or notifications targeting these users can help you increase their velocity within the funnel itself, right? Now, there are two ways of sort of broadly identifying users who are in the middle of the funnel. Right. Uh, from point of view of identification of these users, right, uh, there are three to four proxies which you can use. Right. Number one is uh, how many times has a user specifically visited a product page or a category page? Right. This gives you a very clear indication of their interest towards or interest or affinity towards a specific category, towards a specific brand, and towards a specific product line. Right. Middle of the funnel campaigns essentially can be designed around the product itself, which was viewed but abandoned. Right? Abandoning, abandoning here would mean the user did not add to cart, did not add a product to the cart. Right? So the objective of these campaigns would really be driving the user to add products or add more and more products to their cart so that they sort of move, move uh, within the funnel and go down. Now, uh, second uh, or uh, second proxy in this case would be adding products to wish list, right? Wherein the user sort of, you know, specifically likes a product and says, "I know what, buy." While I can sort of buy it right now, I sort of definitely add it to the wish list, right? Uh, this would also involve uh, users signing up for, let's say, a price drop alert, right? User signing up for a specific sale, right? A user signing up for a specific uh, uh, a specific category which is due to be announced, right? Any amount of engagement that the user is doing with your website, with your with your uh, online store, right, can be sort of used to draw clear proxies and and place him in the middle of the funnel and then sort of draft communication, draft notifications for that user. Again, even in this case, right, uh, the proxies which can be used is uh, it can be used uh, two. One is of recency, and second is of frequency. Uh, recency would essentially be when was it that the user had specifically viewed a product page, right? And frequency would essentially be how many times did the user actually view the product page itself, right? You could also use uh, specific proxies in terms of uh, uh, time spent on a product page, right? You could use proxies like uh, whether the user actually read the views as well whether the user interacted with the images of the product page, right? There are, uh, there are multiple indicators out there, which can be sort of uh, multiple indicators of interaction which can be used to identify how intense is the interest of the user in a specific product, in a specific category, right? Having said that, I would obviously recommend you to use that uh, to refer to only stronger signals while uh, while, while calculating an affinity score of the user itself, right? Uh, another proxy, of course, here would be the value of the product which the user is trying to use it or browse for, right? This obviously uh, helps you to ensure that you can prioritize your campaigns, you can prioritize your communication towards product which have higher cart value, or you can prioritize your communication towards product which are typically uh, highest selling in your, on your store as well. Uh, guys, uh, uh, if you have any questions, right, feel free to bring us in chat. Uh, I have uh, 
Aditya and uh, Divya with me, right? They'll be happy to answer your questions as well. Right. Uh, another classic case of uh, product page abandonment would eventually involve uh, using the brand or the category of the product, right? As a proxy to figure out whether if the user is uh, whether or not the user is uh, user has affinity for a specific brand or whether they are but the user has affinity for a specific category of product. Right? Uh, uh, from 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 middle of the funnel campaign point of view, you could also consider uh, using category uh, engagement of the user on the category page as well as a strong proxy or, or as a strong indicator to gauge what the user is interested in. Right? For instance, if the user is looking at uh, at very, very specific filters on a category page, let's say of price or color or brand, right? It gives you a very clear sense of their sensitivity, right? Which could be then used while drafting the communication for these for these end users specifically, right? Uh, price filters typically are the most frequently used filters and sort of give you a very clear sense of the user's, uh, user's purchasing power, right? So while you're setting up your your instrumentation in Google Analytics or a, or a product like Isoto, do use these filters as well. Do pass on this data as well into those, into those uh, platforms that it gives you a very clear sense of what exactly is it that your users are sensitive about. Right? Because you can sort of use this information to create clear cohorts, clear segments and buckets on the basis of their purchasing power. Uh, can, <coughs> Uh, after middle of the funnel, you can obviously very, very clearly attack on top of the funnel campaigns, right? Uh, wherein, uh, wherein the focus is to identify or, or use uh, whatever to vanity metrics such as bounce rate and time spent on the website, right? And ensure that you bring back those users, right, who have, have either gone dormant, right, or, or who simply bounce either on the website after landing onto your homepage or discovery page, right? Now, Top of the funnel campaigns or top or, or notification for users at top of the funnel are essentially focused on only one and one thing, right? Number one, getting them back on the website, right? That's the single most important objective of top of the funnel notification campaigns, right? Now, because of this, of this very clear, crisp, uh, single laser uh, uh, objective, right? These campaigns are typically designed to be. Uh, are essentially driven by offers and flash sales, right? Uh, you could also use uh, new catalog, uh, new catalog announcements, new arrivals, right? To 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 lure these users, right, and get them back to the uh, and get them back to the website itself, right? So the most important proxies here are races in frequency. This can be sort of used to. This can be used to identify how dormant is a specific user, right? And, uh, and basis the dormancy, you, sort of, you, can, you can craft a communication which will, sort of, uh, which will, which will bring them back to the website itself. Again, uh, all of these use cases, which you sort of mentioned in, on the webinar so far, are, can be executed through the Isoto platform right now, right? So if you're currently using Isoto, feel free to get in touch with me directly or with your account manager or drop us an email on support at iso.com and we'll be happy to help you to set up uh, these campaigns uh, as a very need. Now, uh, typical classic use cases for e-commerce marketers, I think we had covered this uh, even in the last webinar, uh, they were around engagement, retargeting and retention. Now, retention is a topic which you sort of have it covered in this specific part of the webinar because retention is a different ball game altogether, which involves, uh, it involves crafting a strong customer experience journey post their first transaction, right? This would typically involve communication around upselling or recommendations of product. This would typically involve uh, creating strong royalty programs, right? Uh, and hence, you know, uh, hence, and hence, out of scope uh, of a current situation right now. Uh, here's how you know uh, typical retargeting campaigns can be crafted and executed on ISOTO specifically. Right? 
uh, this, for example, this camp, right, which is running right on Macy's, will focus on people who have abandoned the cart in the past 24 hours, right? And this, this obviously is a, is a personalized notification which, which literally pushes out the exact image because the user had viewed on their cart, uh, or because the user had added to cart and abandoned the cart. Another campaign to look at is for engagement, wherein uh, uh, you can sort of you, you can use uh, coupons and offers to bring back users back to the website after they've sort of abandoned a specific uh, a specific product discovery journey. Apart from this, uh, from an attention point of view, you, you, you can definitely focus on users who have a definite buying behavior, right, and uh, uh, and use their inactivity as an indicator to trigger a notification uh, with the uh, back by either a coupon or a discount or a shipping uh, uh, or a shipping waiver to sort of uh, lure them back to your website, to your store, and drive them uh, and push them for a transaction. Yeah, well, so so this sort of covers you know pretty much everything that you sort of. Uh, uh, from a from a conversion optimization point of view, using push notifications, right? Uh, should you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them as well right now. We'll ensure that you guys uh, get this deck uh, in another uh, half and 40 minutes. The recording of this webinar will also be available uh, with you guys. Uh, uh, we expect the recording to hit 